Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Randy Fromm, and I'm going to show you how to repair IGT power supplies made by Wintact. So here's the power supply. You're probably familiar with it. It's a WP203F11, which is out of focus, but trust me, that's what it is. So the first thing we want to do is start by taking off the four little tiny screws that hold the cover on. So let's do that, shall we? At this point, this cover has to come off, and it's kind of stuck. So, and I'm doing this one-handed here, so... What you end up really having to do is take a screwdriver and kind of jamming it in there and prying it off. Hang on a second, I'll show you what I mean. So you kind of have to work the screwdriver blade in here and kind of give it a twist like this. It's like opening up a can of shoe polish, sort of, like that. And again, I only have one hand, so that's the idea. Then, once you pry that loose, you can lift the cover off and... Here is the power supply inside. There are two different failures that you will see in this power supply, pretty much. One is failure of the output filter capacitors, and you'll see that these will be all bulged out. Let's see, here's some, here's some bad ones that we took out. Let's see if I can find a real, a real bulgy one. So I'm sure you've seen these before. This is the kind of thing that you see where it is bulged on the top. It's domed on the top. And these are the output filter capacitors. Uh, three 2200 microfarads at 35 volts and some 6800s at 16 volts here. Um, also, this little guy right here uh, bulges out sometimes. Uh, I can't recall what number that one is. Uh, and so on. But that's not what this problem is. This is a completely different problem and I will show you what I'm talking about right now. There is another output from this power supply. There are three outputs. There's a 13 volt output and it's clearly labeled here and there's a 25 volt output and there's, there's ground. But at pin 7 there is yet another output and it's uh, an output that kind of tells the computer that the AC power is okay and stuff like that. I think. I don't have the schematic for this power supply and Wintac won't give it to me. So um, what we're going to do then is hook our oscilloscope up to pin 7. Here, let me uh, change hands. Hang on a sec. Uh, this here pin right here is pin 7. Ding, dang it. Hang on one sec. So, with the scope hooked up to pin 7, and uh, we've got to ground it. And these things are clearly labeled ground, so there's the scope on ground. Uh, let's connect the AC power. So, I have a, a nice power plug right here, and we're just going to pl plug it up, as they say in the south. And look at the oscilloscope. And what we see here, well, first of all, it's kind of making a hissing sound, and that's not too good. Uh, and what we should be seeing right here is uh, a square wave, a square wave of about 12 volts. And what we see here is actually pretty much not much of, of anything. You might see um, some sort of a small pulses there. Um, let's turn up the sensitivity and see if we can get to trigger on something. Now, nah, there's just nothing there. There's just nothing there at all. Often you'll see some, some, some short pulses there as well, some sort of triangular shark tooth sort of, sort of pulses. But in this case, I just don't see anything. Uh, however, if you, uh, and I'm on 5 volts per division now, if I go and check the DC outputs, you'll probably find that they are actually there. So, for example, if I'm checking the 13 volt output, you look at the scope, here it is on uh, ground. And uh, I can put that right on the line here and put it on DC now. You can see I've got like the 12 volts, 13 volts. It's there. That's all groovy. And if I move over to the 25 volt output, whoops, hang on one sec. If I move to the 25 volt out, darn it, stay on there. The 25 volt output, <laughs> there it is. There's 25 volts. Here's ground again, and I'm on 5 volts per division, so 5, 10, 15, 
20, 25 volts, and there you can see it's 25 volts, so that's all good. So you might be saying to yourself, hey, this power supply is good. It has both the outputs, but it doesn't because it's missing this output at uh, pin 7. And the problem is here on this little daughter board. There are seven small electrolytics on here, uh, and all of those electrolytics need to be replaced. I've experimented with just replacing some and testing them, and don't even bother testing them. There are seven electrolytic capacitors on there, and uh, there are three one microfarads at 50 volts. There is There are two 10 microfarads at 50 volts. There's a 4.7 at 50, and there's a 33 at 25 volts. And all we have to do is whip those out, and here's how we're going to do it. Our next step is to remove the screws. And so there are screws here. There's one here in this corner. There's one here. There's one in the middle. Don't forget this guy right here. Uh, and there's one here, and there's one here. Also, the heat sink, uh, the, the, the semiconductors are fastened to the heat sink. So you'll need to remove this screw, this screw, and then on the other side, two other screws, this one and this one. So let's do that, shall we? Throwing away some trash. Very good. Okay, with all the screws removed, make sure that the semiconductors are popped loose from the heat sink. They'll have a tendency to kind of stick on there a little bit. And the entire, whoops, the entire power supply should slide back and forth, which it can. And now we have to pry it out. You do not slide it out. You actually tilt it out. I don't think I can do this with one hand. Stand by. So you sort of grab it from underneath. Here, let me switch to my non-injured hand. You sort of grab it with both hands underneath and tilt it up like this. And then the entire thing will lift out. Okay, notice which side I'm lifting out. There's a, a metal bracket here that connects the uh, bridge rectifier to the heat sink. That's the side that I'm popping out. That's the last, that's, that's the first one you pull out and the last one you put down. And then you can remove the entire board and set the heat sink aside. And the next thing we need to do now is remove this little daughter board. Do not even think about doing this without a power desoldering tool. Don't try to do this by hand with solder wick. I don't think you'll be successful. You could try it, I suppose, but uh, I think that would be a mistake. What we're going to use is power desoldering tool. Very nice. So from the bottom now, we want to remove this line of pins, and we're going to do that with the power desoldering tool. Let's see how this works on camera. Maybe not too good. Let's see. Beautiful. So we're going to remove the solder from all these pins. Beautiful. Down, let it melt, give it a wiggle, wiggle as you work, and pull it off. So I'm not going to do all these on camera, so stand by while I do the rest of them, and I'll be right back. So here you see all the holes, all the solders evacuated from around the pins, and we're ready to pop the board out, almost. And the one thing you got to be careful about is some glue. They put some hot glue in, um, for example, right... Uh, right down here the board is glued to a capacitor actually kind of weird so I just use a pair of pliers and cut away Can you see what I'm doing here where am I I just cut away the hot glue being careful not to cut through anything important and then you can really just wiggle the board let me let me focus here hang on a sec all right, so you can really just wiggle the board back and forth. You'll feel it break loose at one point. And, uh, and now we have the little board out. All right. So what we're going to replace then is uh, all seven of the electrolytic capacitors on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
So, and just for purposes of identification, um, uh, this is C4 right here. C4 is 10 microfarads, 50 volts. Let me get a pointer here. There we go. Okay, so this is C4, 10 microfarads, uh, 50 volts. This is capacitor C8, 1 microfarad at 50. This capacitor C9, also 1 microfarad at 50 volts. This is capacitor C11, also 1 microfarad at 50 volts. This is capacitor C27. It's 4.7 microfarads, 50 volts. Here's C24, uh, 33 microfarads at 25 volts. And finally, here is capacitor C18, 10 microfarads, 50 volts. All right. There's a better, more in-focus look at the little board. So let's, uh, let's flip it over and start taking out these capacitors. And uh, it's real easy to butcher this board. Super easy. They're tiny little capacitors. Be uber careful. So same kind of thing. And it's, it's really hard to do this uh, one-handed. I'll just show you what I mean here. Uh, just going to unsolder the capacitor legs. Oh, boy. This is really hard to do one-handed. I'll do one more, and then I'm going to put the camera down. No, I'm not even going to do one more. I'm going to put the camera down and unsolder it. Be right back. So now I have all the capacitors pulled out of the board and we're ready to stuff in some new caps. Let's go get them, shall we? And like magic, here are the replacements. So three, three uh, one microfarads, a 4.7, two 10 microfarads, and a 33 microfarad. They're all 50 volts except for the 33 microfarad, which is 25. So let's start sticking them in. Very important to observe polarity. Uh, there is a, a small white square right there that is the negative side. On the right-hand side of the board here, all of the negative, so, uh, negative leads go up. So all the capacitors are installed in that direction. On the left-hand side, all the negative leads are on the right. And on the top, the negative goes down. So here is the board all stuffed, and all we have to do now is to solder the capacitors on the bottom side. Let's do that. So <laughs> I might be able to show you this, but probably not. So let's just see if what you can we can pick up. Mm, soldering, soldering. Really, you need good soldering skills to do this. You need the proper tools. You need good soldering skills. You just, if your soldering skills are marginal, forget, forget about it. You will butcher this board. It's extremely easy to overheat these pads and, and ruin, ruin the board. I really don't know what you're seeing here on camera. I'm doing my best to work around the camera and solder. So kids, try this at home, you'll see. Uh, I get these parts, by the way, from I bought them from Mauser Electronics, but they're available uh, any good electronics store. Are these capacitors. So now all we have to do is just chop off the legs, like so. I'm sure you've done this before, and, uh, and we'll get ready for the next step. All right, next step: reassembly, and uh, all we have to do is replace the board. It goes with goes in this direction with the back side toward the transformer. Um, I think it, if you use a big enough hammer, you can probably get it in the other way. But uh, all I'm doing is uh, inserting the pins in the holes. Pretty easy to do. So there we go. We're all good to go now. And all I have to do is solder it back in place, and uh, we'll be done. 
All right, so now all the pins are soldered in. You really don't have to worry about removing the flux. I mean, it may not look that great uh, if you hate the flux look, but it's really perfectly okay. So next step is we're going to reinstall it. So there you have all the pins are neatly soldered in place, and the next thing we'll do is test it before we put it back in the uh, in the case, the, the heatsink case. It's oh, perfectly okay to test this on the bench without any heatsink hooked up. We're not going to put a load on it. We just want to see if, the, if we get our our signal. So let's go hook that up. So again, uh, same deal here. I'm going to connect the oscilloscope probe to pin seven here, which is that, whatever that square wave output is, you'll see it in just a second, hopefully, if I'm successful. I am doing this live, and we'll see if I'm successful or not. Uh, and let's, uh, brand new off here. Let's, let's start it and see what happens. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There is the square wave I was talking about here. Let me let me just shade this so you can see. So there's the square wave I was talking about. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, we're on 5 volts per division. So you can see we have about 10, 12 volts or so. 10 volts, it looks like, or so. That's the si that's the square wave you're looking at, looking for. So if you see that, you can really be guaranteed that the power supply is fixed. The other outputs are good. I showed them to you. The 13 volts, the 25 volts, they're all there. And that is the entire repair. Thank you very much. All we have to left do is reassemble. Uh, we have to reassemble it back in the in the case, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and have a lot of fun repairing these power supplies. If you don't want to repair them yourself, uh, so you can send them in, have them repaired by somebody else for a hundred bucks. But we have about a dollar's worth of parts, and it takes about a half an hour. So good luck.